Flaunting two additional buttons located on M1, this mouse definitely had my interest peaked. With its sleek and elegant yet simple design, this mouse features five onboard memory profiles, wireless functionality, 140 hours of battery life, and a name brand to back it all up. Logitech provides all the quality of life improvements we've come to expect from mice, but is this mouse any better than the competition and does Logitech deserve your hard-earned money? On paper, this mouse checks all the boxes for me. It has a 25k hero sensor, 13 programmable buttons, removable sniper button, switchable infinity mouse wheel scroll, hybrid analog optical switches, Logitech's low latency light speed wireless, a two year limited hardware warranty, and to top it all off, you can finally charge your Logitech mouse using USB-C. The Logitech G502X certainly has a lot going for it. The previous iteration of the G502 received 9,142 five-star ratings on Amazon. Can Logitech keep up with their own hype? How does this mouse compare against other similar mice like the Razer Basilisk B3 Pro? Is it worth 140 US dollars? And most importantly, As we're diving into this unboxing, I just wanted to take a moment to publicly thank all the new subscribers. Thank you all so much for subscribing and leaving such kind words of encouragement. It really makes my day when I get to interact with you guys in such a positive way. Thank you all so much. Moving on, the packaging is very modern. If you've ever owned a Logitech mouse before, you'll know what you're going to get. In the hands, the mouse does have a very plastic feel to it. On the M1 and M2 paddles, it's all smooth plastic. There's no texture at all. There's a spot on the bottom of the mouse, like all Logitech mice, for the charging station, which I've never used, so... If you have any experience with that, let me know. I'm uh, kind of curious. One of my favorite features about this mouse is the removable sniper button. Now, I don't know if the magnetic buttons are actually Logitech's idea or not. I do think this is a great innovation and I'd love to see more manufacturers implement something like this. Most people will be fine with the stock skates. They're not as nice as super glides, but they're fine. The dongle is pretty much what you'd expect. It has the branding on it and it matches the aesthetic. They included the USB-C charging port, which I'm a big fan of. Not having a USB-C port is one of the reasons I knocked a couple points for the super light. The USB-C charging cable has a very nice texture to it. I actually wish the whole mouse had this texture to it. It does feel pretty quality. Logitech also includes the type A to type C converter and it also has the same coating on it. And the last that's left in the box is the quick start guide and the warranty. This mouse definitely has a smooth plastic feel to it. I do find the asymmetrical shape to be comfortable in my hand. And again, these skates are nothing special, but for most people, they will get the job done. But there are options like the super glides available for those who want them. I've been curious about this mouse since it was released. I'm happy I finally was able to get my hands on it. Now I'm going to hand it off to future me who has some more insights. The Logitech G502X comes in uh, three different flavors. We have the standard G502X and that's the one with the wire that comes out of it. We have the G502X Lightspeed. That's this guy right here. I've been using this for a while. It's the wireless variant. It's a little heavier than the wired version. And then there's the G502X Plus. And the only difference between the Lightspeed and the Plus, it's RGB. You paid 20 extra dollars for RGB. So if you're into that, the option exists. These mice also come in white or black. I thought the white one looked 
nice. So that's why I got it. This is one of the more interesting mice that I've gotten to use. Uh, Logitech says they advertise 13 programmable buttons. If you're going to use 13 buttons, what are you doing? Please tell me. I, I need to know. Leave a comment if you're using all 13 programmable buttons, please. The most I would ever want is M1, M2, M3, uh, the mouse wheel click, and then three buttons on the side. And I also want an infinity scroll. That's important to me. The shape of this mouse is pretty comfortable. I've, I've grown to really like it. I do like the shape. I do like this little nifty uh, thumb rest. I do like mice that have these. I'm one of those guys, so fight me, but I like it. However, the G8 and G7 buttons, these guys right here, I consistently fat finger these all the time. I don't know if you can see how thick my finger is, but for me, listen, this is just, I'm like hitting like three buttons right there. I consistently fat finger this mouse all, all the time. It's been a bit of a pet peeve. I thought I was being really big brain and apex and I thought I could bind this to G for grenade. But what I was finding was in the middle of firefights in this game, I was accidentally going through the grenade slider and completely losing for my team because of it. So I actually, I have to play with these unbound. Other than that, um, it feels really nice, but it's kind of a shame. My buddy uses these for Rainbow Six Siege. He swears by using them for drone deployment and they work for him. So maybe he has better <laughs> Discipline on the mouse than I do, but I consistently end up fat fingering them. I'm also a fan of that. You see that? I really like that they're finally putting USB-C on mice. I really very much enjoy having one cable. I mean, look, just in arm's reach, look what I got. I got this. I have this. I have this. I have this. I have this. This isn't even all of them. And all of them except the super light are USB-C. So just to have one cable, one special cable for the super light is actually kind of annoying. I can't stand the mouse wheel. It has a very muted ratchet sound, like sonically to my ears. I just, I don't like the sound. And that also translates to the feel for me as well. Um, it doesn't feel very tight or tactile. Uh, it feels very loose. You can probably hear that right there. Well, you should have heard it earlier in the video. Watch my videos all the way through. There's good stuff in there. I find the infinity scroll. I find that to be a little lacking too. I could just be spoiled because I've been using the Razer Bassless V3 Pro and they got the mouse, do you hear that? They got the mouse wheel on this, perfect. I mean, the infinity scroll, it's like a fidget spinner, there's no, it's just tight, there's nothing there. The ratchet sound is perfect, whereas going to the G502X, it's very loose. It doesn't feel as quality as the Razer in comparison. I, I do like the, the Razer mouse wheel much, much more. So maybe I'm a bit spoiled with that. For most people, this will probably be fine, but this is perfect for me. I don't really find the M3 button really satisfying to click either. It's very muted. There's no definitive tactile click. I don't really like that. Again, going back to the Vasilis V3 Pro, there is a definitive click there. I know I'm, I'm actually press, depressing it. Whereas on the Logitech, no, not so much. After tax, after tax, this is 140 plus dollars. This is a premium mouse. I, I, I do expect a little bit more for what you're paying. This is, and this, this doesn't even have RGB. If you, if you got it with RGB, you're paying over $160 after tax. It's not good for me. That, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a mouse. The mouse switches are interesting. This is Logitech's hybrid analog and optical switch. They call this the light force switch. To be honest, I can't tell the difference. I can't tell the difference between the clicks. But what this does mean is if you want to modify this mouse and change out the actual mouse switches, you cannot. It's it's a non-starter. You can't mod this mouse in that way. It has to be their proprietary hybrid switch. You're not going to find anything. Maybe down the road, like Logitech said, they want some parts to be available this summer so everybody can service their mouse. So you can should be able to service it, but there's not going to be options for you. If you don't like them, you can't switch them out. That's just what you get. So keep that in mind. Uh, so whereas like the super light, you don't like these switches, you can switch them out. You can put whatever the heck you want in here. With this guy, you can't switch it out. You can't mod it. This is this is what you get. 
keep that in mind. The battery life has been solid. They advertise, I believe, 140 hours off the top of my head, which seems to be holding up. I've charged this once. If you like this shape, you like the thumb rest, you like the USB-C charging, you like the infinity mouse scroll, you like the sniper button, I would say just get this guy. Get the Razer Basculus V3 Pro. I think this is a tighter mouse all, all around. Uh, I like the mouse wheel more. The switches feel about the same to me. The infinity scroll on this thing is nuts how smooth it is. It is so nice. I think this is the better built mouse. It is a little heavier if that matters to you. I'll get the weight comparisons on screen right now. This is the weight comparison between the two of them. But overall, I wouldn't recommend this for gamers, especially first person shooter gamers. You're just not even going to, in my experience, I don't think you're going to be able to really use these uh, G7, G8 buttons. Pros. Good job, Logitech, with the sniper button. Good job with the USB-C. That's that's really cool of you. I do like that. The cons of this guy, I don't like the mouse wheel, and it's not moddable, and the serviceability is questionable. So is it worth $140? I'm going to say no, personally. Spend your money. Get something like this. You can't really mod this guy either. You can make it lighter with mods, but you can't really mod it in the same, same way that you would mod this guy. This is like kind of the king of mods right here. That's my two cents. Hit like and subscribe.